it just, just it, it's coming. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, Honorable Minister, just perhaps a few questions on surrounding this issue. Um, taking into account what the, your predecessor and the, the former head of response to COVID, uh, Dr. Ofiku, what he said about testing, i.e. that government is targeting to do rapid testing to the tune of 200,000 Namibians. Question is, how far are we at this stage in terms of the tests that are done? Two, you've listed a number of labs that we as a nation is busy using to do testing. You've also indicated that two more are coming on board. The question in that regard is, how many, how many labs could we potentially use countrywide? Um, and if there are more than those listed and those two that are supposedly to come on board, what is the reason that we are not using those other ones? If those reasons are financial, could it not perhaps then be that better bite the bullet now, pay an amount that is perhaps a bit uh, not cheap, if there are more labs indeed, expedite the testing, test in volume, so as to ensure that we minimize the cost in terms of management and tracing, uh, tracing after that. The, my last question, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Minister, relates to the truck drivers. I, I did not hear the, uh, the minister, or pardon me if I did not hear correctly, say that we are actually testing each and every truck driver that comes in to the country. Are we indeed doing that? Are those results uh, being prioritized, given the fact that these people are coming from other countries? Or are we having these results after these people have been in the country and potentially have impacted? Lastly, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Minister, and this, for me, is a national concern, and I had a conversation actually with, with the Minister yesterday about it. And it should be a concern for every leader. Myths, misinformation. It appears that there is this perception that when a person dies, People are skeptical in the sense that they expect the government or whoever so tests to say that there is a positive COVID result so as to reach whatever end. I don't know. But I actually had this conversation yesterday with the minister. Um, what is your ministry going to do and government going to do? And as leaders, what is our responsibility and what course of action should we take to ensure that the people out there have the right information? Because if this misinformation continue happening and mistrust continue happening, it will later on lead to complete, complete ignorance from the populace. Lastly, Honorable Speaker, and, and one co political commentator said the following, and he said that he does not see that opposition parties are taking government's hands in fighting COVID. Complete bogus. And the speaker will stand by me when I make this statement. Because the first thing that opposition parties did when COVID came is the speaker, under the speaker's leadership, we got together and said, let's pass this budget so as to ensure that we as a nation can fight COVID. Mm -hmm. And Parliament, we all can testify to what Parliament did. Yes. The Honorable Venani called the President of the State about COVID. So, for some of these political commentators to go on national TV and make reckless statements that are actually on their own, opportunistic in order to further their own ends with the ruling party or whatever the case may be, and that are indeed false, it's irresponsible. And uh, us as leaders, and I ask our journalists, especially those of the national TV, that they must probe people when they make these rec sort of reckless statements. With Thank those uh, few comments, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Minister, Thank you. I wish Namibia and I wish yourselves uh, strength in doing the job that you are doing. Thank you very much.
Um, Honorable Member, you want a quick one because I really want to move on. Eh? Yeah. Can you have your. Please. This is a.